Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Domo arigato. This here's Wichita Roboto. That's... I'm just a kid. This here's Wichita Rutherford from over at 5 Minutes with Wichita.com. And these boys over here at Otaku Generation, oh, they's the really kick it and hiney. And you know why? Because it's a good show. You know why? Because they try hard. You know why? I don't think they know why. They just do it because they love it. That's why. Oh, you boys just are doing so well. <laughs> And you well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation, next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. You think you like anime, you might even love it. You'll think twice about that, though, after you watch five hours of it. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where, please, sir, no more anime. Show number 710, January 16th, 2019. With this week's topic, 2019 Winter Impressions, Part 1. And now, better things to do with a weekend. Number 1, scuba diving. Number 2, skydiving. Number 3, chocolate pudding diving. Number 4, suborbital rocket trip. And number 5, luxurious pineapple spa treatments. And now, someone who had to wear shades so he could sleep through this experience... Alan Chase. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, going pretty good. Watched a lot of anime today, huh? Yeah. I was not expecting you to sing through the <laughs> the uh, the opener. I am multifaceted mm. and multi-talented. Yeah, nonetheless. <laughs> so, uh, hi, hello, everyone. I'm Alan. I am Matt. Catch up. Bryce. And Paul. Yep, we got Bryce and Paul on, uh, on Skype. I think Yay! they just, they like podcasting in their pajamas. <laughs> Get the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to just move straight into the topic since it's season review. We did get some feedback. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll do that later. Thank you, James. Um, and, um, and yeah, because uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, timer involved. Um, why don't we give the title and then I'm going to give the guys on Skype the first uh, stab at uh, conversation points. On um, on the first one. So mm-hmm. what do we got? What's the first one? A boogie pop and others. Okay. So this is based off of the light novel boogie pop and others. I'm not sure if they're going to cover any of the other light novels, but this is not a sequel to um, boogie book- pop phantom. Yeah, this is actually if anything a prequel, except that. Bookie Pop Phantom was actually not connected directly to the manga. I mean, sorry, the uh, like novels outside of it happening after the first book, theoretically, or mm-hmm. whatever. Okay. Anyway, um, so the first episode is incredibly boring. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of Bookie Pop, and one of the things, though, is with the book, like each chapter is based off of the perspective of a character, and they probably chose, like, the worst character to start off the actual anime having... I'm not sure if anyone else, like, was kind of bored with the first episode. Did anyone watch the second episode as well? Or... No. Yeah. I didn't. I thought no. the first episode was a little slow. I wouldn't say I was bored, per se, but I it was definitely... I, would, I wanted some more stuff to happen. Well, sure. so the question yeah. is to be asked, which one of us or how many of us have seen the original? Or again, this isn't actually based off of Boogie Pop Phantom. This is based off of the light novel. I have read the light novel, and it essentially covers the light novel and then some. And this is my big fear with Boogie Pop and others is that they're going to try to take a story that should only take four episodes to tell. Because again, it's a single light novel. You mm-hmm. can easily tell in four, actually, possibly even three episodes if you do some proper. Um, kind of cutting, stuff yeah. yeah but instead i have this fear that they're going to try to extend it to they're actually i think i've read 16 or 18 episodes as planned which is a oh, weird as number to like 10 or 12 or something yeah oh 
So I'm really hoping that they're planning to cover multiple books because there's no way in hell they can properly <sighs> fit, I mean, properly extend the first book into that many episodes. Wow. So, but the second episode I did watch, because they actually released both the first and second episode at the same time. They didn't, like, do a single double-length episode. There was actually two separate episodes, but I did watch both. And the pacing does improve on the second episode, but there still is pacing problems. My recommendation is, if you're curious about Bulky Pop and others, don't watch the first episode or watch the first episode after you watch the second or maybe even a third episode and then watch Mm. the first one. Because because okay. another thing with Boogie Pop is that since it's being told from the perspective of characters, the first episode actually takes place during all of the events of the first book, but it's from the perspective of characters barely involved with any of the other characters. <laughs> well, that's a great introduction. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it was a very shade choice. It's the only real reason I'm thinking, like it's been a while since I read the book. Yeah. But I don't think his chapter was the first chapter, but even if it was, I think the more reason why they have this as the first episode is because Bookie Pop is in it a lot. But big thing with Bookie Pop, it's Bookie Pop's rarely in the Bookie Pop books Episodes. much. <laughs> yeah, Bookie Pop is more for Day Ex Machina character. He just appears near the end of the stories to fix everything. Oh, Most okay. of the books are about these other people having problems and things going. It's mostly going. about people like suffering through horrible supernatural maladies and then Boogie Pop will sort of like show up and like you know, go, oh yeah, that monster needs killing. Yeah, pretty much. So it's, it's <laughs> kind of hard to give a real description that much of the first episode because rarely, I mean, unless someone wants to try, but it also it's not really so much supernatural, like they like to give that sort of a feel, especially like I think the first book, but it's actually more um, science fiction, because most mm. of Boogie Pop's more involving the sort of like giant company that's producing it's like evolved humans to actually take away, to kill off naturally evolved humans, because they're trying to keep a status quo in the world. But again, the first book is more about how an alien comes... This is actually stuff that's covered in the second episode, so this is mildly spoiling, but whatever. Uh-huh. An alien comes to Earth to decide whether or not humanity should like exist or not, whether or not people are kind, called Echoes. Uh-huh. And <laughs> that company that I mentioned goes and finds Echoes, makes a clone of him, but the clone is all like evil and Gosh, aging people. darn it. But anyway, did you the same one want to try to give a description of the first episode or not? Uh, contemporary Japan, allegedly real life, except that it has horror slash supernatural elements in it, and I don't know. That's that's about it. There's there's this guy. It's and kind of slow. <laughs> his uh, he knows this his girlfriend in the weird costume and helping out some guy who looks who is in- freaking out in public. Yeah, and then eventually, like, goes and confronts the girlfriend on top of the roof of the school, and mm-hmm. it's actually a split personality called Boogie Pop. Yeah, and she's like, I'm not your girlfriend, pal. I'm Boogie Pop, the savior of humanity. Okay, so, um, Bryce, Paul, do you guys have any take on this? And then... I'd watch a couple more, probably, uh, but I didn't love it, but I definitely didn't hate it. <laughs> it's, it has to pick up the face, though. I'm not going to watch it all the way through, so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the first episode was clearly, I mean, you could, it, after a while, you figure out the time skip thing, and it's like, well, okay, so what? Because the things that they're depicting are not, in fact, all that interesting. So, yeah, it has some potential. Um, I did not watch episode two. I may watch some others, but I'm not, like, super excited for it. Production was fine, just uh, static. Okay. Yeah, the first episode's choice was just incredibly stupid of the producers. It really was. <laughs> okay, so why don't we give some uh, info about it, uh, links, and so, then let's move on. Boogie Pop and Others, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at oglink.com slash 2TS. Um, for those who uh, who will be following along on the podcast, you can uh, go to oglink.com slash OG710, the show number and uh you can see all the links that we uh, we prepared basically for this conversation piece um and probably going forward any kind of links that we have a special during the show we'll, we'll go in places like that based on the show number um okay so with that said let's hope to respect the timer this time <laughs> so what's the next one on the list next is i mentioned high school okay and what do we need yeah. now 
Let's sure this people... is the worst one we watched this week. I'm oh my say. god, this <laughs> is so terrible. This is Forest Fairy Five and Guda Guda Fairies flashback territory. I yeah. mean, it is it is fucking horrific. Um, we should also mention the large chunk of its live action. That's that is the big gimmick of this show. It's a live action show, but when they go to fight the monster, they drop into the video game world, which is CGI animation with a cell shader and motion I, capture. And I think they use motion capture for for the quote unquote action of of their avatars. And the the basic premise is these five people are in in like cram school, and one of them picks up a meteorite, which determines that they are thereby chosen as as the avatars to go to the alternate dimension, fight a sphinx in puzzle contests, and thereby save the world. And the deal is, if you don't solve the puzzle, one member of your party gets killed. Except they aren't killed, killed. When you come back to reality, they're still alive. Except they have lost, quote unquote, the thing most precious to them. Yeah, this is this a full length one because it. It, it feels was, like it's about yeah. three hours long, even though Alan assures me it's only twenty four minutes. Yeah, at least Far's Fairy Five was considered enough to be a half length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but it's it's just bad, sirs. It's it's very bad. Um, yeah, oh God, is it bad? <laughs> oh, it, it, it's basically four or five dudes just like talking randomly for twenty four minutes, and believe me, you feel every one of those twenty four minutes as they attempt something which I think is intended to be improv. Um, and they're I, I, I think this is a way to attempt to save paying writers or something. And it shows you why writers are actually kind of important when you're making a show. Paul, for a moment there, I thought you were describing the podcast. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Um, This is not good. Uh, I'm sorry. No aspect of it. You can convince me is productive. I thought the first puzzle, the solution was kind of cute, or the first puzzle, how it works. I'm not saying recommend the anyone watch it was boring as hell. I'm just saying I did like the first puzzle. Yeah, don't give it positives <laughs> for people to watch this. You know they're not going to like it. Oh, yeah. It was, a if, per- it was a perfectly fine puzzle, but it was not an anime, right? This is not a uh, computer game. This is not like, you know, a, a column in a paper where there's a puzzle for you to solve using lateral thinking. I'm not this recommending an anime. I'm not recommending this to people. I'm just saying I did like the first puzzle. There was at least one yeah. saving grace. Um, this this had all of the entertainment value of watching somebody who's never played video games before play a video game, except you're on the other side of a plexiglass wall and you can't shout hints or tips at them. Actually, personally, I'd rather watch what you just described than this. So none of us are recommending this, I'm assuming. No. No. Or, no. So, Dimension High School, if you want to experience something unpleasant, then go to High Dive. Or do at, something else. At odrylink.com slash 2TU. Okay, what do we got next? Next stop is Dororo. 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 Okay, this is one of those fun medieval Japanese samurai stories that has supernatural demons in it. I believe this is based off of a pretty old manga, which like was real yes, respected years ago. Yeah. The basic yeah. premise of this is there's a samurai lord, and the land is racked by famine and ill fortune, and he's not able to go warring and conquer like he really ought to do. So he has the brilliant idea of going to the Temple of Hell and pledging his loyalty to demons. In exchange for whatever they want, they will grant the land good fortune and him prowess and warfare and the realization of his ambitions. And they grant his wish. Horribly, horribly grant his wish. Okay. And and somewhat novelly, he says, okay, cool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because... Yeah, firstborn son, I'm good with that. (laughs) <laughs> yes, because what happens to his firstborn son is, after a painful and protracted labor, his wife gives birth to a baby that has no arms or legs or skin. And he's or like, eyes or nose. Or eyes or nose or whatever. And 
the guy is just like, all right, the demons have accepted my bargain by this omen. Go kill the baby, and I'll start on my wars of conquest. Yeah, he seems a little bit more upset about the little Buddha statue inside of where his wife gave birth, and you can see its head. And he wants oh, about yeah. his... when when the baby is born, lightning strikes the room where the birth takes place, destroying the statue of the Buddha that they have to like provide good luck. And he seems more upset about that for a moment. <laughs> he does about the fact that his... It's like, well, the hell with the Buddha. The land's in famine. I'm not getting what I want. Screw the world. And... So that's the first half of the episode. <laughs> There's a time skip, and we find out that the son wasn't actually... or I mean, we kind of find out this before, but the son wasn't killed and was saved by a blind monk and can kind of see evil... Not really monk, but exorcist, yeah. I should say. And so he's, his arms have been replaced with swords, or um, not replaced, they weren't there to begin with, but <laughs> he has swords now for arms and wears a f- mask for his face, and he goes around and fights demons. Mm-hmm. But, oh, the bow itself, though, was very well animated. It's pretty kick-ass, I thought. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. and the weird thing is that, that Dororo isn't his name or the demon's name. It's the name of a street urchin who hooks up with him in the second half of the show, and just sort of becomes his sidekick um, because apparently you need somebody to provide exposition when your hero is blind, deaf, and unable to speak. Okay. So but I thought this was well animated. I mm. would kind of recommend people checking this an episode out at least if they're into action shows. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paul, what about you? Uh, yeah. Now, this is um, very well done. It's worth noting that it's not just an old manga, but it isn't actually based off an Osamu Tezuka manga. Okay. So uh, this is um, very interesting. This is one of the ones I was really positively anticipating, and I um, I haven't formed like a strong opinion on whether it's going to be great or not. Uh, The first episode was solid and interesting, though, so I'll be checking out a couple of more for sure. I expect it at least to be entertaining at worst. I don't think it's going to be awful <laughs> based on the first episode because I thought it was actually a good time watching it. I was not bored, unlike some of these other shows. I'll say that. That's <laughs> true. Sure. It was not boring. <laughs> okay, so uh, Link? Yeah, so if you want to check out something that at least has some pretty kick-ass action, then check out Dororo. It's on Amazon and you can check out otrelink.com slash 2TV. Next up is in Japanese. I don't have the English title, so please, people, help me out. Uh, what is this? My roommate is a cat. Dokyonin wa hiza, toki doki atama no ue. My roommate is a cat. Yeah. And can I just say how relieved I was when it turned out that said cat was not, in fact, a sexy cat boy? <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, I was also happy that it wasn't some kind of omnipotent being that talked out loud that the mm. character could hear. Yeah. Um, the, the, the this is a show about a guy and his cat. But unlike a lot of the other cat shows that have been floating around recently, this is an actual realistic-looking cat, or kitten in this case. It's it's not a banana. It's not a vampire. It's, it's not a spaceship. It's, it's not like a blob with sort of cat-like ears protruding out of the top and a dopey little three for a mouth. It's, it's an actual real cat. I a mean, stray cat. A stray cat, it, it does have its own inner monologue, but it doesn't talk to doesn't the, talk talk to the guy, it doesn't talk out loud, right. it has no magic powers, it's just it's kind of like Garfield, cat. right? I mean, isn't that <laughs> that happens to Garfield? Like John can't no, understand it. Garfield yeah. is a snarky, you know, Well, no, self-aware. I don't think they're the same characters with the same concept that the cat can talk to itself, but yeah. the owner can't understand. Sort right. of, but, but this is like, you get the feeling that this cat thinks more like an actual cat would think as opposed to Garfield, who is a cartoon character shaped like a cat. That's fair. Um, One thing I did, like those, how you said like about, you, know, you hear it's in your monologue, but that's only for the second half. You essentially mm-hmm. have the episode first done from the perspective of the guy, the owner, who's right. a writer, who's very non-social. Right. And but, is yeah. all of a sudden inspired by this cat to, yeah, to, to write. write a new book. and. Yeah. And then the second half is you see the same events that happened during the first half, but from the cat's perspective. Yeah, and I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. It's it's sort of like this this Rashomon style um, event where you're not seeing people lying about it, but they're giving their their unique perspectives on it. 
if they keep this up, that'll be cool, but I have my doubts. So I'm not sure if this is something that'll be worth keep watching, but at least the first episode I thought was. Hmm. Yeah, my heart sank when we did the first sort of roll back and the cat started talking. I'm like, oh no, this is going to be <laughs> dreadful. But it actually wasn't dreadful. It was like about, you know, very quickly, I was like, okay, this is cute. I'm going to watch this. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's, it's pretty cute. I mean, seriously. But not like overly cutesy. Like there's, there's more to it than like a banana and yeah, whatever. So. <laughs> oh yes, it's much more grounded. So that's the whole thing, or it's grounded. I mean, there's nothing truly fanciful outside of the right. cat's monologue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that I think was the saving grace of this because I just looked at that, looked at the opening credits, and I was like, oh god, it's another cat show. I'm not a cat person, so I I was just looking forward to this like changing a flat tire in the rain and uh fortunately it uh it pleasantly surprised me okay so i guess we recommend people at least check out an episode or what yeah i'd say yeah, so definitely. i mean if you're interested in anything other than action shows this is worth checking out okay so my roommate is a cat i think i got that right okay. you can check out at ochilink.com slash 2tw all righty so next up is a gal no daika, the price the of smiles. The price of smiles. Okay. Smiles. Smiles. Oh, this was. I don't. Hmm. Uh, the the setting for this is outer space, the kingdom of prosperity, something or another, whose brand new princess has come of age at the ripe old age of twelve. Um, she's fortunately a largely ceremonial princess, whose job is basically rubber stamping the expert opinions of her advisors and, and department heads. Um, but she wants to be more of an active ruling princess. And if, well, all of her advisors are, you know, well-trained and honest and taking care of the business of the empire, there's got to be something else that she can do for the empire that nobody else can, which is to bring smiles to the people. And uh, that that so seems as, to be her her I want song. I will say that you can tell by the title of this. This is probably gonna have a little bit of a darker twist <laughs> towards the end. Um, so you definitely <laughs> you're gonna watch it. Wait till after the credits because that's when they had the final sort of scene about the true nature of the kingdoms and their relationships. Mm. Yeah, that was uh, pretty lousy in terms of like <laughs> a, an episode setup perspective because the the first episode is just tedious. I mean, there's like this <laughs> boring mech fight. And the characters are these flat cardboard cutouts, and they wait until, you know, as Bryce just said, the closing credits to say, hey, wait, no, we really are actually going to do a twist here. Yes, it's a completely obvious twist, but, like, it's a twist, man. What do you want from us? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, guess it, I guess it's a mech anime, right? Is that what it's going to be? <laughs> it's hard to tell. Know, Was this based off of a video game as well as Wandering? Because, like, most of the episode is actually the simulated mech duel between the princesses, like, guard and like another like person in the kingdom who's like let's prove yourself worthy or some shit and then they have this big like virtual fight in the tokyo with the mecca yeah yeah i'm not seeing anything about it being based off anything uh so I... yeah it's an original anime i believe yeah i mean it's got a cute 12 year old princess um and cgi fighting um, I, I was just happy that it wasn't like a uh, a singing idol and a I princess. I thought that same thing when she walked up on the stage. <laughs> like, oh shit! They're gonna see yeah, the everybody's... idol show into me here. <laughs> yeah, and then everybody was waving those glow sticks, just yeah. waiting for the singing no, to start. No. Yeah, and a clumsy <laughs> singing idol princess. Yeah, that's a, that's a, my immediate instantaneous thought when she like did her her duck roll. She's adorably klutzy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and I, <laughs> I wouldn't call it adorable. Um, so no, we have focus groups that indicate she is twelve percent more adorable than our mean mean line base. Yeah, I um, I won't be watching more of this. <laughs> Let me say that I don't think there are any other true like mech shows this season. So that's the only real reason I could like tell people to check this out. They're really desperate and jonesing for a mech show. But outside of this, the world building itself is boring and sucky. Mm. It's my opinion. Okay. Any uh, other like how about so? Guess Paul and Bryce are not planning to watch any more either. Correct. So this could have been worse, but boring and sucky basically sums it up pretty well. 
Yeah, I didn't. I don't want to watch more. <laughs> maybe they got to the twist way earlier and were like, yo, it's really dark shit. I was like, yeah, maybe, but nah, it's not enough. <laughs> it took too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, The Price of Smiles, you can check out on Crunchyroll at oglink.com slash 2TX. Next up is Girly Air Force. That's and who, kind boy, of. is it girly. And man, was I cringing when that title came up. <laughs> I, just, I, I had to wait an extra day to bring myself to watch this one. Yeah, this is yet another entry in the perennial favorite of girls who are weapons. Doing things. Yeah, doing things. The basic idea is that for some reason, China has been overrun by this super technological army called the ZXI. And there's all kinds of refugees from China streaming into Japan. And the Japan self-defense forces are losing because despite being Japanese and therefore possessed of 20 times the amount of typical pluck and courage, they just can't overcome the technological advantage of the evil Z, who have things like, you know, perceptual technology camouflage and momentum dampeners so their fighter planes can turn on a dime, whereas, you know, human pilots die if you hit them with 12 Gs, the big pussies. Um, and so the, the forces of Japan have reverse-engineered a super fighter, which is red, to fight the evil Z, um, with sort of like an android girl as a pilot, except the android girl is, is like in, I don't know, an adolescent funk or something, and she doesn't want to fight the war uh, until she meets this one boy refugee after a dog fight and kisses him, and then she's all inspired to save the world because he's in it or something. Yeah, whatever. Or something. I didn't think this was that bad, actually. <laughs> all, all told. Like, I, I didn't think it was great. But certainly better than I thought going in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was totally braced for this one to be just dreadful. And, like, I'd rather watch this shit than Strike Witches, I guess. I mean, it doesn't mean it's good, but, I mean, like, the character's wearing pants. <laughs> I, I was prepared for its predictableness. Um, mm. and and how lame that was going to be, and it, it didn't uh, fail me. I don't know. I, I just sort of viewed the girl, the, like, android girl in the red airplane as sort of like a watered-down Ray Ayanami. Yeah, I, what did I say? I said, you know, add some, uh, you know, religious symbolism and mm. uh, make the uh, the planes turn into mechs, and uh, you, you got yourself a winner yeah. right there. Well, they're not ripping off Evangelion because Asuka's mech was red, and Ray's was sort of like white and blue theme. I know. So I'm it's just saying, totally different from Evangelion. Right. But, but if don't you, compare this to Evangelion. This is so much worse than that. I'm just <laughs> saying is, you know, if they're going for a, a database format, you know, that that's the winner. <laughs> yeah. You that, have to increase the quality of it <laughs> by segma magnitudes, and then maybe you'd have Ava with the yeah. symbolism. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. Um, I, I won't be watching any more yeah. of it. Um, I don't know. I think it could have could apply to some people for me it, it doesn't apply I, it gets a diversity credit from me from from having a, a container ship being attacked by alien fighter planes yeah i'd rather just watch his sony and the uh, again or just go watch eva <laughs> all right i've watched like that battleship one like a pregia blue steel probably before i'd watch this yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um we got links so that's our, our paul's your final like recommendation or not just because it wasn't as bad as expected is not a recommendation, and I will not be watching it. But if you like Strike Witches, I mean, this is probably or the uh, the Blue Steel one. Yeah, this is this is likely to be up your alley, and there are worse things you could watch this very season. <laughs> so none of us are planning to watch any more of Girly Air Force, but if you want to check it out, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can at ultralink.com slash two do you. Anyway, next up is. The quintessential quintuplets. Go Tobun no Hanayome. This so, is as pure a harem as we've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. But we know how the harem ends up at the end because the thing actually begins with the guy swaying and then becomes a flashback. Oh, is that what that wedding shit was all about? Yeah. Oh. It's all about telling the first day that he met his bride to be. Ah, okay. Uh, that, uh, that sort of like floated right past my balloon like head. So this is about a guy who's in a ton of debt. He's a high schooler, and five new students have moved into the town, and they all need tutoring. 
and they're and quintuplets. He, and they're yeah. girls well, yeah. who are yeah, quintuplets. Find out they together sisters. because they're all sisters. They're quintuplets. And he has been hired to, I guess, tutor them. And they're all failing. So he's got his work cut out for him. And plus, so let he the offended. Fun begin. <laughs> and plus, on the first day of school, he offended one of them in the lunchroom. And now they all want nothing further to do with him. No, no, two. One of them actually does kind of like him or is like being friendly to him. And one of them is kind of not truly going out for way to like hey scots but three of them do hey scots oh okay yes yeah, so how dare corrected. you imply these characters are generic <laughs> <laughs> they are totally different from each other uh they're generic it's just that they still have differences they're just generic differences from each so other there's the patanko dits the busty one the girl with the glasses and then there's the girl with the star thingies in her hair and the other one none of them are patanko Really? I thought the ditzy girl was kind of flat-chested. No, they, I thought we were... Uh, maybe I'm about a zero? Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm just misremembering it. It was just stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. But, uh, yes, they all have distinguishing characteristics, and they're not in any way identical. That's for sure. So, I guess you can tell from our tone that none of us really <laughs> care for it or would recommend it, but I, I guess... I mean, if you're really jonesing for a hair <laughs> anime... <laughs> I just have, go, there hasn't what? been one this pure of a hair in anime in so long, maybe <laughs> you'd be able to check it out. But just rewatch nah. Tenchi Mayo. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm sure there's better options. Well, well that, I, I think that's the point. I mean, this is, I mean, it's a it's a reasonably well executed example of its type. It just happens to be a really boring and generic type. Mm. I mean, it, it's taking zero risks. It's just saying, yeah, here are some girls. And that's basically all it's saying. And, yeah. and, you know, if that's what you're looking for, yeah. you know, have at it. And there's tension and conflict. But you know the ending because they already show the ending at the first episode. He because the... he wants to tutor them, but they don't want to be tutored. Get it? So anyway, none of us are recommending it, but if, as I think Bryce's recommendation is good. If they're really desperate for a harem show and watch this, otherwise watch something else. But the quintessential quintuplets... It's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out oglink.com slash 2v. Hopefully I didn't run over anyone else's comments. So next up is... Kimura Kasa? Kimura Kusa? There's no English name for that? I don't think so. I looked no, it up, and wasn't. that's all it is. Uh, this is this is a weird show. It's some sort of post-apocalyptic universe... Oh, this one. Oh. Where it's done with CGI <laughs> animation and a cell shading algorithm. There's a lot of red. And it's it's about these very strange girl-like creatures who live in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, scavenging for water and trying to avoid being killed by these giant monsters they call red bugs. I think this is done by the same people who did Kimono Friends. Okay. Oh, no, you're right. That could be true. <laughs> it does explain the incredibly shitty animation. Oh, my yeah. Uh, the motion is not bad as some of the other CGI shows, mm -hmm. but it still looks very odd. <laughs> that, the facial animation is horrendous. Yeah. Um, the, the girls have various powers. There's only, like, three girls in total, but one of the girls, her power is that... She can, like, consume almost anything and then spawn off new copies of herself. So the one, there's technically, like, seven of them, but four of them are one girl. Also a problem, or, like, that stuff I didn't find as being that bad, but for me, the problem with it was when they introduced the uh, guy from Japan who gets transported to this world, and it's like, what? This is so interesting. What? I don't understand what's going on. And they're like, well, it's not an us. It's probably a red bug. Let's kill it. <laughs> and this goes on for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and it makes you wonder if our protagonists are what you would call exactly bright. Yeah, but the guy was much worse than the them. I mean, they kind of have an excuse. I mean, they're in this weird world. He was I don't just know. A... He has the excuse that he just blew a sand check. They're just dumb. They deal with fantastic weird shit all the time. And for them, the fantastic weird shit's the ordinary. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, they should be able to take this in their stride. And, you know, I don't blame the kid for being all Arthur Dent. Like, what? I don't understand. Where's the tea? And, you know, 
they should be like, all right, we got this in the well in hand. Well, I guess either which way, I think we at least both just didn't care much for it. Yeah, it's weird. So it's just because it was terrible. <laughs> just because it was terrible. So, Bryce, <laughs> you're... No, no. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the people that may be recommended to us, if you really like the animation of Kimono Friends, <laughs> and then... Mm. I recommend this to people who I hate. So, Kimuri Kusu, Kasa? Kimuri Kusa. It's on Amazon, and you can check out at oglink.com slash 2WC, CS and Cat. Mm-hmm. Next up is Meiji Tokyo Renka. And that's the title. There's no English title for this. It's just Meiji Tokyo Renka. So, if you can figure it out from the title, it takes place in Tokyo during the Meiji period. And our protagonist is Renka. Yeah, it's essentially one of those... Um, it's like Fire Tripper, where she gets transported back to the Meiji era. Or I was just going to say, it's a Tome game, essentially, to my uh-huh. knowledge. It's based off of, you essentially have the one girl who's surrounded by bitchy guys. Oh, 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 okay. Um, yeah, our, our protagonist is Renka, a girl who has second sight and the ability to see and talk to ghosts, which... Uh, makes her somewhat of an outcast in her social group in that she does not have one. And then one day while taking part in a a stage magician's uh, magic act, she is vanished and winds up in Meiji area Meiji era Japan. Also, all the bishis are based off of historical figures from Tokyo or Japan's Meiji period. Oh, including okay. Lafkady O'Hare. Hello, <laughs> I know which route I'm taking. <laughs> yeah, the main guy. I forgot who he's based off of. Uh, the red-haired one was like at the very end. He's like, "Little squirrel, you belong to me." And I was like, "Oh uh, no!" <laughs> <laughs> I went from being like, "Well, this isn't for me," to like, "Oh no, this is creepy." <laughs> So the production quality yeah. wasn't horrible. Everything else was <laughs> pretty bad. So I felt. This actually, I think, is one of the better Otome game adaptations we've got in a while. I mean, it, this was actually watchable as these things go. I mean, it was not yet another fucking idol show. Uh, the main character has, you know, a little bit of independence. Uh, the Bishis aren't as terrible as they might be. I mean, I'm not going to watch this but i mean i was i was surprised that i was okay with watching this episode all the way to the end as much as i was i think this is the first reverse harem show of the season that we've watched so unless there are any others i guess that's the only people that we'd recommend it to it the best reverse harem show of the uh, season yeah <laughs> yeah um, by default I yeah guess. i mean this is this is very clearly a genre piece and if you're and it's there is nothing beyond its genre. So if you're looking for a reverse harem, this is what you got. Otherwise, yeah, just keep keep walking because there's nothing here for you. So, no other comments, I guess. No. no. Okay, so <laughs> Meiji Tokyo Renka, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out oglink.com/2wd. We are all very much agree how much we won't be watching this. <laughs> Yeah. But man, left Katie O'Hearn. I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next up is Pastel Memories, which is another show that pulls off a shocking twist near the end. <laughs> yeah, because initially it's about the it's about it's about a world where anime, manga, and video games have ceased really to exist or is only being produced. So these girls run a cafe in Akihabara, and they basically spend their whole the whole episode going through hell and high water trying to find this uh, manga collection to complete to sell to this young girl who remembers it from her memories and they're you know they're i guess they're getting paid to run around town finding manga which doesn't sound so bad yeah <laughs> and then um, at the end it's like oh by the way it's a magical girl show <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it goes yeah yeah okay yeah that was the thing that really threw me for a loop is like it seems fairly grounded in an alternate reality. Okay, the, the age of manga has passed, and Akihabara is now just a normal district with a couple residual manga game shops. And then, at some point, the magic grandfather clock starts bonging, and just weird shit begins happening left, right, and center. And and I was like, 
what the fuck? Is this like the new stage in the manga collection? Like, is this really happening? Did someone get LSD in their water? I mean, I'll say that that twist maybe like at least remember this show because because <laughs> honestly, the rest of the episode is kind of like whatever. <laughs> at least yeah. they had something I could like remember it by. Yeah, them but. searching for the manga, which takes up over three fourths of the episode, was just getting boring and tedious. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nine of these freaking characters, and the premise is basically in the grim darkness of the future, only cute girls like anime. So, I mean, there wasn't a lot going on before that. And then the twist is utterly disconnected from anything that came before. Are they gonna? But are they gonna jump into worlds of other manga? Was that the, what they were implying at the end? Like that's the worlds they're gonna go to to fight something? Maybe. I'm that's not, never possible. Never, they, <laughs> never <mind>. I dug. <laughs> The manga they were looking for, was that a real manga? I need to know. <laughs> These are important questions. I would hope not. It it seemed like the like the whole thing was, was like funded by the tourism bureau of Akihabara because it's like, well, we've all of our otakus and neats are perishing from lack of reproduction and eating, so we need to like lure healthy, sane people into being otaku now to buy our products. And it's not like they haven't done something like that before. We've seen prefectures, you know, try to uh, make a make a show to make their town seem interesting. So. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is the case with this show that's actually being funded by Akahabara to get tourists. I think it's just yeah. saying for the environment. <laughs> but I but I wonder if there is like a growing sentiment in Japan that like okay, the age of the otaku has come, and now we'd like it to go. And this show is is about that. I I have high doubts on that. Okay, but anyhow. So uh, the first episode, you can't really decide what the show is going to be truly about, but you get enough of. But a sense. you can decide that you don't want to watch. Yes, it. <laughs> you definitely can do that. Uh, and that's exactly it. I decided I won't be watching it. Yeah, I have no plans to watch more, and because the first episode doesn't really tell you what the show's about, I can't really recommend it to anyone either. Yeah, I'd I'd rather watch Skullface Honda selling you know manga than these people. So pastel memories are probably best not to bother with, but if you do want to bother with it, it's on high dive, and you can check it out at oglink.com slash two said one. Okay. Next so next is Rishi. Uh, Ekoda Chan? Uh, Rinchi Ekoda Chan. This is a short. It's really cheap animation, and the sole virtue of it is that occasionally the protagonist is a female who wanders around without her clothes on. Although you don't see any good bits. It's not technically a short. Like the animated part is a short, but most of it is some actually doing a making of. The making of is longer than the actual damn thing. Ah, uh, okay. By many magnitudes more. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's three like minutes, three minutes, and then the rest of it is. <laughs> and it, then it's a full length, so you get, like, you know, twenty over 20 minutes of the director, like, being uh, unpleasant at the voice actress for the character. And, like, all I could think while watching this utter garbage is just how awful it would be to be a woman in entertainment in Japan. You know, Aww. as this guy is making jokes about masturbation and how the character in the manga was worried about a lizard crawling up her vagina. It's like, and, and you know, yeah, she's, you know, smiling along and nodding. I mean, this is just a grim scenario, and it keeps going and yeah. going. And in a way, it kind of mirrors the plot of the anime because it's basically about Ekota chan who is, like, in her early 20s, and she just holds down jobs because she has a deep, passionate interest in eating on a daily basis. And all she does is just, like, stand and smile and try and get through the day and then, you know, stay up late at night talking about random nonsense while her boyfriend is trying to sleep. It's based on a four coma, so it's probably why it was pretty scattered. It felt like it's yeah. going from one thing to the other. I'm interested to see what the four coma actually if it is that as what the anime presented. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, that. I mean the short itself wasn't terrible, and the interesting thing here is that this is intended to be an anthology show where every episode is going to be done by a different director, different voice actress, and I believe a different studio. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, they said that. Yeah, which is I don't know. Is this weird that you would dedicate all like twenty minutes to a three minute short 
each episode yeah. Yeah, of the making of it. Just that's just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean that the actress saying, you know, man, you know, she kind of envies Akoda's life because she, you know, she really liked judo, but then her mother, you know, like forced her into showbiz at age thirteen. So that's really all she's known. Oh. And then you have this, you know, this director next to her. It's just, you know, it's just. Uh, I, I, I did not come away from this show feeling happy and warm about the process of making anime. Mm. I, I didn't even watch that part, but it sounds like it's pretty bad. It was a good choice. Good choice on your part. Yeah, I follow Brace's recommendation and pretty much skip the live action bit yeah, as me, well. We did as well. Yeah, I scrubbed through it, but like I didn't, in case there was like another short, but there wasn't anything in there. So mm. No, this was positively not good. <laughs> And I mean, positively, I mean, negatively, not good. Confirming that it's not good. So. I kind of, like, will agree with the thoughts of it might, it'll be interesting to see the manga of this, but the anime probably is uh, skip. They also said that there's a live action movie version of it. I have no clue what that's like, but. It's 15 minutes and then an hour and a half of how they made the 15 minute movie. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's probably true. So. Just, I guess, going around, I'm not planning to watch any more anyone else. Nope. nope. Um, I may check out a little more of the short. There is no way I'll sit through an entire, you know, another 20 minutes, let alone the full season of interviews with these people. Um, it is worth noting that the director of this first episode was also the director of Meiji Tokyo Renka, which we just talked about. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, Reishi Ekoda chan, it's on Crunchyroll, and if you're curious, you can check it out at ochilink.com slash 2 said 2 Next up is The Rising of the Shield Hero, or Tate no Yusha no Nariagari. And this is a yet another one of those things where a fanboy gets sucked into a fantasy slash video game world to fulfill a prophecy of defeating evil that only he can defeat. Except that, in this case, the heroes are the four cardinal heroes who, with their signature weapons of sword, spear, bow, and shield, will adventure, level up, and then defeat the terror of the magical waves that are threatening the fantasy world. Seems pretty straightforward. He gets summoned, there's a bit of stumbling about, and then they sort of start playing against type because everybody else who gets summoned is apparently like an old hand at this saving the universe biz. And they're just like, yep, okay. Um, here's how I access my weapon stats. Here's how this goes. Here's how that goes. Yada, yada, yada. And he's like, wait, we're doing what now? <laughs> and uh, it, it just starts going downhill for, for him from there because he finds out that his weapon is a shield, which is not much of a weapon. It levels up slower than everybody else's. <coughs> um, word gets out about how his weapon sucks, so nobody wants to join his adventuring party. And then the one person he can get to join his adventuring party um, basically robs him while he sleeps. And then he winds up being falsely accused of molesting her and winds up a bitter, penniless adventurer who has got the choice of committing suicide to go back home or slogging it out to the end of the prophecy by himself with no resources and no reputation to level up his weapon. So Wonderful. It's, it's a, I don't know about this one, guys. <laughs> it's, it's like a bitter rabbit punch of an anime. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it was pretty generic and sucky until they got to the false rape accusations. And then it's just like, okay, you guys are just continuing to dig here. <laughs> also, at I mean, the end of the episode, we find out how he's probably going to end up recruiting a party. <laughs> so that's also messed up. I don't know what that was. but Yeah, well, it's like he, he has no friends. He has no reputation and no resources. So he's just basically going to like recruit based on spite. Yeah. Well, no, well, no it, it, a slave trader comes up to him. He's like, "Hey, man, you're here's some trouble. Come with me." And he goes along, and it's like, "Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll buy some slaves to be my party." It's kind of where they're going with it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Either that, that or it's too. like, you know, I'll buy a, a cage full of XP. Insert sword through bars for two hundred X points. 
No, I mean, the just, there's no one to like in this show. That's the problem. It's like everybody's <laughs> awful in their own way. <laughs> yeah, including the main character, who like from the very first moment he like picks up a book in the library, and he's like, "Oh man, that princess looks like a bitch." And it's like, <laughs> okay, you know, I don't want to spend any time with you at all, or the person who wrote this. I'm just gonna walk away now. I think the one thing it does have to just... I mean, I'm not saying, like, Ooh, it's good. I'm just saying that at least it's different that the fact that the guy isn't overpowered like so many of the other coming into a world and the person's, like, the super awesome can-do-everything guy. At least it's different the fact that he sucks. So, I thought it was strange they put the video game elements into it. Yeah, that because was Because really. it's not like Sword Art Online. He didn't, like, get sucked into a video game. Yeah. He sort of got transported to this world. He, and it's he, like, oh, but yeah. it happens to have... Uh, stats on your stat page naturally <laughs> yeah and and that was like the the thing that sort of like threw me for a little bit of a loop was he gets transported to this world by finding a mysterious book in the school library and it's about these four cardinal heroes and he's you know leafing through it and then he gets to the point where all the remaining pages are blank and i go oh that's so cute you have to write the ending of the story yourself that's a cute hook and then, of course, he gets, you know, sucked into the other world. And then they start throwing in, like, this video game stuff where everybody in the video game world is pretty genre savvy about it being a video game. Or at least it's not a video game, but everything in it works like it is a video game, even though it's a and d fantasy world. Yeah, I don't so know. fucking mm. lazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean just... so fucking lazy. Uh-huh. I mean, come on, put a little effort into the word world building here. Yeah, it I... is. It's just like the most generic MMO stuff. Yeah, I am very I mean, little, very rarely a fan of these kind of shows. I mean, at least Jumanji was like funny about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just for the sake of like trying to find people like to recommend it to like maybe people like Gotham Slayer that type of like fantasy swords and whatnot world that's like really dark or mm-hmm. maybe well not even really dark I mean I think that the, like the sword art sword art online crowd I mean might like this yeah. if you can get past like the you know the horrible characters <laughs> oh that's all that's nothing on sword art online <laughs> yeah okay so, so... link. So, The Rising of the Shield Hero, if you do want to check it out, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check it out at otlink.com slash 2 said 3 And last for the night is a short. It's like a half-length short, though. And that's How Clumsy You Are, Miss Uno. You know? Ueno. Ueno. Yes. Ueno-san no bukiyo. And we are not going out on a high note here, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, like, anyway, so, Ueno is... A scientifically minded young girl who is in middle school, and she's got a crush on this boy in her class called Tanaka. Tanaka is totally oblivious to this. So Ueno just tries to give him hints of her feelings for him by doing more and more bizarre scientific experiments to try and mangle into being some kind of warped, like, meet-cute um, encounter between them. And... I got a real Aho girl vibe from this one. <laughs> <And> this is <laughs> awkward and creepy and kind of gross at times. <laughs> yeah, well, she's... At least they were high schoolers. These are middle schoolers, so... <laughs> she. The thing is, she's she's got this romantic impulse, and she's really trying to express it in the only way she knows how, which is through creepy science experiments. So this is, it's a half-length show, but it's broken up into two parts, so Mm -hmm. it's like two five-minute shorts put together. The first one's about her trying to make the guy drink her pee, which has been purified. And the second one is about trying to make the guy look up her skirt because she has a device that makes it impossible to look up a skirt. Yes. So that pretty much tells you what the comedy of the show's like, I think. And, uh, and both of these go on way too long. Mm-hmm. I mean, the entire first half is just saying, drink my pee over and over and over and over and over and over. And, and then implying the because line. he won't, he's being a really heartless man, <laughs> like rejecting yeah, her. Yeah, because she has know. like that, that one other girl who's in the science class and she's sitting there like very disinterested until she figures out that Tanaka is spurning this girl's admission of love because he's a blockhead and then she gets very very upset and you know chastises him for for being an insensitive lout and he's like 
what? Wait, what's going on? Why? Um, yeah. It's, it's basically got like one joke and it just keeps going and keeps going with it. So to my understanding, none of us will watch any more. Neither would any of us recommend it, or am I wrong? No, I won't be no, watching there, this. There is no, nothing no. to recommend here. Well, I anyone. felt bad watching it once. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like <laughs> mad at myself. Paul, like, Paul, you, sir. <laughs> Paul, there is one recommendation. Don't watch it. <laughs> uh ha. Uh-huh. So, how clumsy do you are, Miss... Ueno. Ueno, thank you. It's on High Dive, so if you want to watch it, why would you? But if you're curious, <laughs> it's, you can check out OGLink.com slash 2 said 4 High Dive got all the bangers this year, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, that's a poor choice of words. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Um, then I, I guess we should probably wrap up. <laughs> yeah, probably. I guess I'm going to do that. I did watch, and there's a new season of um, Mob Psycho 100, and that's something good to watch if you're desperate for something good to watch after all of this I, I've horror. I've been saving it to save myself when I need it. It's quite good, though, the second season I recommend. You check yeah, it out awesome. when you can. Um, while we're doing some uh, you know, business on the end of this show, mm-hmm. uh, new Colin Lou came out, new Polymatic came out. Um, so, yeah. All right, well, I, I, I guess it's now actual time for us to, to close up, wrap up. So for all the things we've mentioned here, www.takageneration.net or ognetworks.tv or now oglink.com slash og710 for this show. You'll see all the links there, including some social and other other you know community options like Discord or Patreon or Twitter or Instagram or YouTube. You know, the things. Um, so what are we going to do next? We're going to continue along. Uh, we have at least 10 things that we know that we have to watch. And who knows what else will come out by, uh, by next Sunday. But you'll find out next Wednesday because that's when we podcast. For feedback, you can always hit us up at otaku.generation at gmail.com. Um, Otaku Generation, one word via Skype. We still have phone numbers. If you like to call them, they're in the show notes. They're on the website in the show notes. Uh, so you can do that. So we, uh, we have a fortune. And we have a proper botas, so we uh, we can, um, I guess we can do a proper appendage. appendage. You could have just quoted the thing that I mentioned last week. Uh, you and what l- was the thing you mentioned last week? Or last week it was the, um, it stalks Wilford in the dead of night. Okay. Remember with the picture, the thing that you're asking about, the picture of the little sculpture thing. Okay. Anyway. So anyway, that's not for this week. For this week we have... <laughs> What do we got? Okay. This week's fortune cookie to guide you through your upcoming week. Hate is never conquered by hate. Hate is conquered by love. When in 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. All right. By the way, that's from uh, the opening sequence of Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. <laughs> oh, right, right. I was thinking of Starhawks or Silverhawks, but then, okay, yeah. No, that's for another week. <laughs> it wasn't Star Blazers? No, no, it's Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, which I recommend people check out if you haven't seen it. It's a good cartoon. Is right, this based you... on the Harry Harrison book? I don't believe so, but I don't oh, know. okay. All right, well, we are actually going to stop recording now, and we're going to go away. So we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye-bye.